Morning folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to a short video which I'm going to do where I'm just going to uh, film the process of me doing an oil change on my Husky 701 um, As people know, if they've been following my channel for a while I picked up this bike new in April 2022 It had its first service at 600 miles it's next service at uh, 6,800 miles because the service intervals are 6,200 miles and normally, ordinarily, I'd just let the dealer crack on and just do the uh, oil changes and everything else that's required with the service at those required intervals but I just thought, just for an experiment and just to sort of give myself a bit of knowledge and peace of mind I'll drop the oil mid-service intervals so currently um, the um, dash is saying that the next service the full service will be due in 3,300 and some miles so I'm near enough as uh, near as damn it halfway through that 6,200 mile interview interview interval so it's a good time to do it so what I like to do is I'll give the bike a good run beforehand maybe for 10-15 minutes just get the engine oil nice and warmed up go through the gears and just give any sort of sediment that's resting within the engine casing an opportunity just to sort of get caught up in the oil so that when it's warm and I drain it it will flow out nicely and hopefully it will remove any particles that might otherwise have just uh, stayed resting within the casing and the only other thing I do pre-dropping the oil is I'll take the bash plate off of the uh, uh, on my case it's an AXP bash plate an aftermarket one the reason why I take that off is simply f is really just to simplify matters when I come to start dropping the oil uh, because obviously the last thing I want is to end up burning myself on the exhaust and uh, I say that through experience because I have done that unfortunately before and it's bloody painful so yeah take the bash plate off go out give it a run for 10-15 minutes go through the gears get the engine nice and warm and the oil nice and warm get back home drop the oil etc etc so that's what I'm doing now folks so uh, I, what I'd like you to do, I mean the process that I'm going to do, because this certainly isn't a tutorial on how to do an oil change, I am not a mechanic and I'm sure that when I do do the oil process, dropping it, changing the filters and the uh, screeds and everything like that, I may well do things wrong and if anybody who's uh, more proficient than me at doing these type of things notices that I'm doing something incorrect, poorly or perhaps not as efficiently as I could be doing leave a comment down below that's always appreciated and that's this is how people learn isn't it and I want to learn how to do basic maintenance tasks with this bike so uh, yeah I'm just gonna do a few more miles get back home and I'll catch up with you in the garage right I managed to get back home before it started raining so back in the garage now and now we're going to drain the oil and uh, change all the filters and everything so just show you uh, what I use first of all um, in the packet on the left we've got the oil filter service kit uh, I get that from the dealer it's uh, gas gas husky KTM compatible 45 pounds uh, might seem a bit steep that but it's got both filters in it's got the um, oil screeds in the um, sump plugs gaskets crush washers it's got everything in there i'm sure possibly if you bought them individually you might save a few quid but i like to do it that way and then it's it's just nice and simple uh, i've got my oil obviously there it's uh, the bike uh, takes 1.7 liters and uh, obviously we'll stick that in in due course tool wise i have the uh, hazet h-a-z-e-t torque wrench which i'll use just to cinch up the bolts at the end and i'll go through the torque settings on that other than that just a normal uh three eighths uh ratchet head uh extension bar and all i need then is a 13 mil socket head which i've got and a 8 mil uh, for the oil filter covers and uh, tool wise i think that's it uh, there is a socket head on top of that extension bar not sure what that is but uh, anyway right i'll discover that in a moment so yeah so i'll just get this positioned down by the um, drain plug and then we'll get the engine oil drained so generally speaking no matter how careful I am doing this, 
I always end up with the oil spurting everywhere simply because the side stand gets in the way. It would be better if the uh, oil receptor could go a little bit over to the right. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. And so I've just put a bit of sack in. Come on, oh, why is that in the wrong setting? Hang on a second. There we go. Right, so it's just cracked that. So you can feel that the uh, oil's warm. The engine's still nice and warm. See if I can get this out nice and slowly. Uh, slight spillage, but not too bad. But yeah, the oil's nice and warm. So we'll just let that drain out. Okay, so that's doing all right. Let me just get a cloth. Right, I'm not sure if this will focus on that or not. But yeah, you know, I think that's about focused, all right. Yeah, so you can see a few metal particles on the end of that, but it doesn't look diabolical so we'll get that cleaned off give it a spray with some brake cleaner which some people I think call contact cleaner don't they and uh, we'll get a new crush washer put on that Good as new. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that dripping because there'll still be a little bit coming out. And then I'm just gonna move the uh, oil screen, which is very tight. And yeah. I would say that that was far too tight. So again, you've got a bit of oil coming out there. Just catch that without trying to burn myself. Yeah, I don't know why that was as tight as that. So again, just bring that closer to the camera. Let's put a cloth underneath it. So I wouldn't say, let's see if I can get that to focus. Come on, focus your bugger. Let's put my hand behind it. That's better. Bit of an indentation in it there, but uh, I wouldn't say that's in bad condition at all. Looks pretty good. But uh, you can just clean these up with a bit of brake cleaner or something like that and a toothbrush. But again, in the service kit that I get, it comes with them, so I just swap them over. Um, it just seems simple to do that. And just give that a bit of a clean. And then give it a wipe over. But I'll change all these gaskets on here. The kit comes with all the replacement ones, so all those will get changed. So I shall just put that to one side. I think what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to uh, lift the side stand up just so I can tilt the bike over a little bit further. Yeah, you see, loads more oil coming out there. So as I said, this is only the intermediate or intermittent oil change. So I'm not too fussed if I don't get every last dreg out. So I'm just going to take this oil filter cover off here now. And get this filter out. At least these bolts weren't on very tight. They don't need to be. Like I say, I'll do all the torque settings at the end. So that's a bit stiff as that. Let's get some pliers. I meant to get some pliers out anyway. 
So I'm just gonna use a cloth on this just so I don't damage the paintwork. See if I can get it moved. Yeah. There we go. And a bit more oil. So just let that drain out. I'll wipe any surplus oil off the engine casing, obviously, once I'm finished. Right, so there are some fancy pliers with little tips on the end that you can use to pull out that filter, but uh, I haven't got any. So I just use some normal nose pliers, put it in, and it will come out just a bit faffy, obviously. It's coming, is it? There you go, just as good, works a treat. So let's have a look at the condition of this filter. Let's get that cloth away. So I don't think that's too bad. And on the uh, underside of this, again, obviously you've got a gasket on there. And again, the service kit comes with that. So all these will get changed over. Okay, so I know I've still got the uh, oil screen at the front to do, but because I haven't got much room to work in the garage, I'm just gonna replace the components which I've removed on this side. But uh, just for comparison, uh, obviously we've got the new filter and the old filter. Um, the filters are different sizes, as I'm sure you all know. So uh, I shall replace this one first. And uh, the bits with the, uh, the rubber on the end, that goes in first. And if you just manipulate that a little bit, uh, it's pushed into place, so I know that that's good. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the, um, put the replacement, the new gasket on there. There's still some oil on the actual uh, metal part, the lid, if you like, the cover. But my fingers are greasy as well, so I'm just gonna put a light coat in um, of oil on there and then that will just help it sit nicely once I put it back into position. So I'm not going to torque these up just yet. I'm literally just going to put them into position and then like I said I'll go through the torque settings with you at the end of the video. So I've just done that finger tight at the moment. Okay so the next one. So the new oil screen uh, just needs to have the gaskets put on it. So uh, if you can see those Two new gaskets So I'm just going to use a bit of oil and again, I'm going to use the old oil just simply because it's not that dirty Get that on roll it over And then the same with the other one Bang that on Roll it over and let it just sit in the recess on there. So that's that one done. So both ends are identical. It doesn't matter which way that one goes in. So uh, it comes with new, uh, the Burt pack, the oil service kit, comes with new bolts if you like. So you can literally just shove that straight in there and then fasten that straight in to its little opening. And again, I'm just gonna do this finger tight at the moment. That's fine. And then the final one is the drain bolt and the crush washer. So I'll put that on as well. So I haven't got much room to move in my garage. But I'm doing the best I can with this video. Hopefully some of you will appreciate it. There's dog air there, let me get rid of that dog air. So yeah, so that's clean. 
again just got to be careful that you don't cross thread these but finger tighten them initially like this you'd soon know if you'd cross threaded anything right and they seem okay so we've done the uh, oil drain plug the oil screen plug and then over here we've done the oil filter cover so what we're going to do now is i'm just going to reposition the camera on the bike so i can get around the other side we'll do the other oil filter and the oil screen which is at the front of the engine so two ticks and i shall come back to you right so i've juggled the bike around so let's just get this uh, oil screen plug cleaned up best as we can give it a bit of a wipe and that's that so again this is the um, I probably won't need that extension bar on there actually 13 mil Very tight. So again, just a few dregs of oil coming out there. So let's get that changed over. So again, we get that lined up on the camera. Put my hand behind it. it tends to focus better. So again, reasonable condition, I would suggest. Not too bad. So I know what I've done as well. I've, uh, I'm just looking at the washers or the gaskets I've got left over here. I've got two spare ones. When I put the oil screen plug in on the other side, I forgot to put a new gasket in. So I shall go back around and do that. I don't need to do that on film, but yeah, this is why uh, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Let's put a bit of oil on there. Let's give that a bit of a, Give that a bit of a smear. Come on, you little bugger. On you go. It's one on. Bit of a smear on there. Fiddly little things. You can see why some people don't like wearing gloves. Just give that a quick wipe there. Oh, it's not too bad. So I've just squirted that with some brake cleaner. The amount that might have gone inside is minimal. So I'm not concerned about that. So we've got that. We've got that with its new washer on, new plug on. Slot that into there. It's got its gasket on, so that's good. And then just drop that in. And I shall just hand tighten that. As best as I can with greasy hands. Spot on. So that's that. And then we just need to do this last filter over at this side. So I shall just uh, get the camera repositioned. So give this a quick blast. Try and get rid of any debris that's around there. And give it a quick wipe down. And then this is the same as the other side. Six mil. See, these aren't tight. I don't know why the other ones were so tight. I think somebody might have over-tightened them. Who knows? But, uh, anyway, get these out. One. 
and two. And again, just work that. Bit of oil coming out there, not a great deal. What I shall do is I shall just put that cloth there. So you've got a gasket on here, which I'm just going to get a long screwdriver, thin screwdriver. I always think I've got all the right tools ready and waiting, and then I realise I haven't. So I'll get rid of that. So look at the condition of that, looks all right. Give that a quick blast it down. And a wipe. And we'll get the new gasket put on there. Again, just use a little bit of oil. I'm just going to use the old oil as before. It's good enough. There you go. That's on properly. And then just need to get this filter out. I'll use my pliers, see if that works like it did on the other side. Okay. So, let me just get that in view of the camera. So with this filter, you've got a rubber stopper either end, which you didn't have on the other one. But you've got writing, uh, probably part number and brand, etc. So I suppose it makes sense to put that one facing outwards. Shall drop that filter in there, work it in. There you go. And you can just feel it push into place. And then let that seat in there. Screw these up by hand so you don't accidentally cross thread anything. And then I'll just do these finger tight again. That'll do that. All right, while I'm around here, I'll just give that a quick blast down so that when I come to take it off to fill the engine, oil, engine up with oil, it's reasonably clean. That'll do. What size is that? And that's a 13 mil as well. Is that a 13 mil? Pretty sure it is. Yep, it is. So I'm not going to put the oil in until I've put that gasket on the other side. Okay, so I'll just uh, rectify my mistake on the other side and then I'll come back to you. Right, so your oil filter cover bolts, uh, the manual says that they should be torqued up as a guide to six Newton meters. Now my torque wrench only goes down to 10 at the lowest. So I'm just gonna use a normal spanner, but I'm not gonna over tighten it. Just tighten it up evenly and to me, That is sufficient. So that is that. And the oil um, screen cover down the bottom. The manual says that that should be 15 or a guide of 15 Newton meters. So I can use my torque wrench on that. So as it was a bit tight, and I'm assuming that it was done correctly, I'm going to set my torque wrench to about 14-ish and that's it, that's all it needs. Okay, so I've just had to move the bike a bit, so just check that, let's look at that on 15 Newton meters, which I have, so I'm just going to tighten up the uh, oil green cover here and again that's fine and then the drain plug at the side of it that was 20 newton meters let me just see uh, where we are put that under the light so I can see it better 
There you go. And again, that's it, 20 newton meters. I'm not gonna do it any tighter than that. And then uh, likewise, as I did on the other side, the uh, oil filter cover here, I can just move the camera around. It's gonna tighten these up evenly in very small increments. That's good. So give that a bit of a wipe down. It's not too bad. So tightened up the oil filter cover. I've tightened up the oil screen cover. I've tightened up the drain bolt. And then at the front, I've tightened up the front screen bolt, filter cover around the other side. So it's just the oil to go in now. All right, so I've got the largest filter in the world here. So uh, a litre of this in, it's quite cold as this oil so it's just taking a bit of going in, but we're getting there. I like this funnel as well because it's got like a sieve mesh at the neck so if there is any debris, which you shouldn't expect there to be, but if there was any debris in the oil it will hopefully be captured in that and not end up in the engine. Right, once this has gone in, we should be good. And then I'll just fire the engine up, let it run for a couple of minutes, and then uh, turn it off, let it stabilize, and just see where it is on the uh, oil viewfinder window. So I'm just gonna give the inside of this as well a bit of a blast with the Blake brake cleaner. So it might just need a little bit of a top up this, but we'll just see. Give that another wipe now, since I've just dropped it on the dirty floor. And again, I won't over tighten that. Right, so yeah, I'll just start the bike up. Get the oil circulating. Right, that should have got the engine reasonably warm. So the manual then says, I think, just let it s turn the engine off for a minute or two. Just let the oil settle and then uh, level the bike out and we'll see where it is in the sight glass. So as I said, I'm definitely not a professional, but I enjoy tinkering with the bike. It gives you an opportunity just to learn a little bit about it and how to do these simple jobs. So uh, that's, that's, that's why I'm doing it basically. It's just enjoyable I like doing these sort of things so yeah just give that a short while longer yeah so I think that'll benefit just from a bit more oil there that'll do Topping up a little bit. I've got some spare oil, I can soon top it up. And then the only other thing I need to do once I'm satisfied with the oil level, uh, although to be fair, it don't really make much difference, but yeah, the only other thing I need to do then is to uh, just put the bash plate back on, which I'll do that when the engine's cooled down and the exhaust is cooled down, because I do not want to burn myself. 
So that's it folks, so that's how I do it. It may not be the right way, it may not be the quickest way, but that's how I do it. Um, and I enjoy tinkering with it. So, but by all means, if anybody's got any hints and tips as to how to do it perhaps a little bit more efficiently, leave a comment down below, that's always appreciated. I uh, hope you've liked the video. If you have, give us a thumbs up, share the video, and uh, consider subscribing if you like the sort of stuff I do. Thanks very much for watching, and I shall catch up with you all on the next video. Ta-ra for now.